flag at the beginning of this presentation is that which hung over the GPO in 1916. After the end of hostilities, it was taken by the Royal Irish Regiment and lodged in the Imperial War Museum. It was eventually returned in 1966 to the Irish Republic of Ireland for the 50th anniversary of the Easter Rising. Many of the figures that um, participate in the Rising are reasonably well known, especially Michael Collins, who has become something of an icon. A rather lesser known figure, whose obituary I'll read out in a moment from one newspaper, is of particular interest. Robert Briscoe dies at 74, taken from the Desert Sun, volume 42, number 250, 30th of May 1969. Dublin. Robert Briscoe, the only Jew to serve as Dublin's Lord Mayor and Roman Catholic Ireland's ambassador extraordinary, today died at his home. He was 74. His family, including a daughter who became a nun, to his great delight, said Rick Briscoe died peacefully during the night in the house filled with mementos of his triumphal tours of the United States, the nation he called my other country. Briscoe's twinkling eye, his wit and his pride in Ireland and Judaism captured the hearts of his countrymen. His 1950 election as London Lord Mayor of this heavily Catholic city raised no eyebrows here. I'd say that's probably a little bit simplistic, but I'll come back to that. In which he... But introduced Briscoe to a world in which he championed his beloved Ireland. News of his death hit Isle Dublin at breakfast time. The old folks with whom he fought the British for independence two generations ago, and the younger Irish for whom he promoted an age of industrialisation, put Dublin into mourning for the man who made the star of Ireland, David, an Irish symbol too, which is interesting as a, as a contrast with today. The family announced that in keeping with their custom, burial will be tonight. Born in a Dublin suburb, September the 25th, 1894, not 1594, which someone's put here, which is quite funny. Um, Briscoe was one of seven children of a Lithuanian Jew who came to Catholic Ireland to find freedom for persecution. Briscoe isn't remembered that well outside Ireland, and even within Ireland, he's become a more obscure figure outside Dublin. But without him... It's quite possible the War of Independence would have foundered much as it went on. He acted as the chief courier and gun runner for Michael Collins, and is supposed to have. And his encyclopedical notes in how to approach ships and how to approach ports and what to avoid made sure that at least some proportion of the arms got through. He's also of interest as today we have the Ukrainians fleeing a persecution. Then we had the Lithuanians fleeing a persecution, and Lithuanian Jews fleeing from pogroms within the, was the, the Russian Empire. I'm well aware of the pogrom that occurred in a minor way in Limerick in Ireland. I'm, I'll get round to that in, in some other presentation later. But my focus really here is Briscoe. Briscoe also exemplifies how a man whose family came to Ireland and who were technically foreigners produced a child who became one of the greatest patriots the country had ever known. I'm going to swap to another page here now. This is from the Irish Jewish Museum, which is sadly lacking funding at the minute and could do it some more. Robert Briscoe, the second son of Abraham William Briscoe and Ida Yotakin from Lithuania. What it doesn't tell you here is that Robert's other name is Robert Emmett Briscoe. And anyone who knows anything about Irish history will know that Robert Emmett is a Nikon that blazes across the sky of Irish history. His speech from the dock was something that was some, routinely thought to children at one point. It's still one of the greatest speeches in human history, in my view. Abraham instilled the tenets of their religion into the children, as well as educating them in the ancient myths, legends, histories of Ireland, especially tales of the great patriots, such as Theobald Wolfstone and the aforementioned Robert Emmett and Charles Stuart Parnell. It tells you about sort of Robert's role in the Rising and afterwards below. Robert's education started in the Catholic primary school behind his home. That must have been interested in in that era. I'm not, I would have wondered how the Catholic teachers would have handled this. The Presbyterian Secondary St. Andrew's College, Dublin, and the Jewish Public School, Townley Hall in England. In 1912, Robert was sent to Germany to study business methods and electronic engineering in the Salomon Handel Academy in Berlin. He took classes in Hebrew religion and history in the 
Hildesheim of Seminary for Rabbis. He was apprentice to the commercial firm Heck Pfeffer in County Berlin, in, in Berlin at this period. This period of his life and the contacts he made it aided in his revolutionary work later for Ireland and for Israel. He made contacts with the Zionist movements during this period, and that's a point I'll come back to in a minute. If you look below, you can see Robert's plans for sort of a, avoiding capture if you're, a sh if you're a ship carrying arms. These are extraordinarily detailed and give movements of ships, entrance to ports, things to avoid, lights to avoid, etc., etc. He understood that the essential basis of anything like an insurgency, or one of the bases, is, is reconnaissance. In 1927, after the Irish Civil War, Briscoe, who had by this point parted ways with Collins and taken the anti-treated side, was elected a member of the Irish Parliament for the Fianna Fáil party he helped to form with de Valera. It's quite interesting looking at that because de Valera is often seen as the arch Catholic of all time, but one of his closest political alliances was with a Jewish man. Having served for 37 years, he saw many changes in the country, and th this is where he, he himself ran into conflict. The intransigence of the Irish government, its policy of refusing to admit Jews in the th 1930s, raised his Jewish awareness and his inability to help his European religionists turned his attention to the movement of Ziv Jabotsky, under whose auspices he led missions to the USA, Poland and South Africa. He has quite a link to the Ergon in the early years of Israeli independence. Considering how the view of Israel is, let's not mince words or be silly, in Ireland less than favourable at the minute, and how Irish Republicans view Israel as, as almost a Nazi-like state itself, and have long swapped to supporting Palestinians, one wonders how Mr. Briscoe, who died in 1969, would find this. Here is a, for our final um, um, words. This is his funeral, which was, of course, a military funeral, considering his role, with President Avon de Valera standing there on the right, with looking typically austere. Briscoe is a lesser known member, as I say, of Irish history, but there are quite a few Jewish figures who intersect with the period of the War of Independence and the Civil War, who are well worth learning about, and I'll be trying to do some more presentations on them.